My pleasure. Thank you, Arthi. First, I want to extend my condolences to you on the loss, of course, of your longtime friend. And I want to just ask you to sort of reflect on that friendship and share with our viewers some of your reflections. Well, I, I first encountered Gordon um, way back when in the 1960s. Um, he was still playing uh, Steele's Tavern on Young Street, and uh, Bernie Fiedler was attempting to induce him to come play the riverboat. But I first really met uh, Gordon seriously after I came back from living in New York for a year and had joined up with uh, the Albert Grossman office myself. And uh, Gordon threw a party, and that's where I first kind of really met, talked, slash got to know him a little bit. Uh, and, uh, you know, Ronnie Hawkins, for that matter, was there, too, and uh, a whole other cast of complete narrative wells. But uh, it's, it's a friendship that, that lasted a long time. Uh, at one point, we all lived together in uh, a building behind Maple Leaf Gardens. We called it the Purple Martin House because I had an apartment. Uh, Bernie Fiedler had an apartment. Bernie Finkelstein had an apartment. Gordon had an apartment. And the True North Records Finkelstein Management Office was on, on another floor. So we never had to go out. <laughs> you know, those are some obviously cherished memories you have uh, with Gordon Lightfoot. And we thank you for sharing those with us. I'm wondering what your initial impressions of him were when you first met him and how that evolved over the years as it moved to, to someone who you met at a party, as you described, to uh, you know, a, a storied icon in Canada and someone who was your good friend? Well, it's, you know, it's kind of a strange feeling. I mean, I never really, I don't think Gordon ever thought of himself as a Canadian icon. Uh, you know, we, we all hung out and uh, it was sort of more of a marriage of equals. Gordon was really, uh, a, a lot more generous a person that I think that he's generally given credit for. Um, inviting me to play on the Olympic team benefit at Maple Leaf Gardens. In the most recent past, he agreed to induct me into the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame, for which I was exceedingly grateful. Um, but like Gordon was, you know, was a, a quite a humble guy. Um, and interestingly enough, I think a lot of people aren't really aware of the fact that he was quite well known in the music community before he was known as a performing artist or a recording artist. He was really quite successful as a songwriter. And in particular, um, I think the first Gordon Lightfoot song I ever heard was probably sung by Marty Robbins, who did uh, Steel Rail Blues and Ribbon of Darkness on his records. Peter, Paul and Mary did That's What You Get For Loving Me. So there was kind of a there was a, a very uh, strong underpinning before he really became well known as a solo artist. What do you think about his music has has made it so inspirational to so many more generations of artists going forward? Well, principally craftsmanship. Um, you know, there's an old uh, thing they say in in the in the southern United States, like, "Oh, he plays the shape notes," which basically means you know how to read music. And Gordon actually was educated musically. He could read and write music um, very adeptly, and he actually wrote his songs that way. So he carefully crafted them in very much the same way that Leonard Cohen would craft his poetry. He rewrote and rewrote and rewrote until he got the thing right. So the first thing you notice about Gordon's songs is they're all really well put together. But I think the thing that, as with any songwriter or artist, the thing that really makes them ultimately, other than getting lucky and getting a hit record is the fact that songs attach themselves to people during certain points in their life when there's something going on. And it doesn't even necessarily mean that the song has something to do with that thing. It just means that it was in the air when those things happened. You know, as I've said to other people, it's like why married couples have their song. Um, and Gordon's songs, when they came along, they really... I think they really attached themselves to people's lives because they were accessible, they were beautiful, they were well-crafted, they were well-sung, and they came along at exactly the right time. You know, in telling us about how you met Gordon Lightfoot, you did give us a small peek behind the curtain uh, of what he was <laughs> like. I'm wondering if you have maybe another favorite memory that you can share with us about your friend and your friendship with Gordon Lightfoot. 
my my favorite memory, I think, of Gordon is is in quite the recent past, and uh, it was really kind of a beautiful moment. Um, as I mentioned, he came up and gracefully and graciously uh, inducted me into the Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame, and we were hanging out in the trailer. Um, before there was a little guitar sitting there that was going to be given away for a prize so i tuned it up and i looked over at gordon and said you know nobody has ever sung um that that beautiful beautiful song about you know being a homeless vagabond early morning rain correctly not the way that you sang it like all of the all the folk performers that were that covered it whether it was ian and sylvia or anybody else they all put all these kind of mi minor chords in it and all you ever did was like it was a one four five like a straight major chord thing and uh, and so they all got it wrong and i'm going to sing it for you like you wrote it so i sat down and i sang the song for him with the straight major chords which really makes it a much better song and um, and he got kind of emotional, which was kind of sweet. But it was a nice moment for me, and I think it was a nice moment for him. And it's a lovely memory to end this conversation on, too. Thank you so much, Murray, for your time and for those uh, stories and anecdotes from behind the scenes. We appreciate them. Oh, my great pleasure. Thanks for talking. And, you know, it's a big hole. I just wish Gordon had lived long enough to see the Leafs win the Stanley Cup. <laughs> Thank you for this, Murray. That's Murray McLaughlin. He is a Canadian singer and songwriter, and we reached him today in Toronto.